Hello everyone and welcome to another one of Corteva's Seed Applied Technologies webinars. My name is Maurice von Brains and I'm Editorial Director of European Seed and I will be your host for today. We have an excellent uh, set of, uh, of speakers for you ready and they will be speaking about the topic uh, which is Lumisena. But before diving into the presentation I'd like to ask the speakers if they could briefly introduce themselves and let's go around in an alphabetical order. So, Daniel, you are first. Hello, welcome to our webinar. My name is Daniel Sirbu. I'm Corteva Seed Applied Technology Manager responsible for Central and East Europe. I'm located in Bucharest, Romania. Dominic. Hello everyone, my name is Dominique Marquet. I am the Seed Applied Technology Business Manager for South Europe, so from uh, Turkey to, to Portugal. I am based in uh, Sevilla in Spain. Mm -hmm. Luc? Hi everyone, so my name is Luc Chiquel. I'm IFS Film Scientist at Corteva and I'm working for seven years now in Seed Applied Technology Research and Development for Europe. Nancy. Hello everybody, my name is Yuseli Fernandez. I'm a part of the SAT team in charge of, of the Center for Seed Applied Technology, MA based in France. Oleg. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Oleg Shakchuk and I'm an EMEA EFS Seed Applied Technology Biology Lead. So uh, my, my role is to develop and characterize Seed Applied Technology products uh, in the region coming from Russia, Ukraine, CIS countries, down to South Africa, mainly focusing today on Europe. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, Thierry. Good morning, uh, everyone. I'm, my name is Thierry Romy, and uh, I'm the Supply Technology Business Manager for uh, Northern Europe, and I'm based in France. Mm -hmm. For our audience, it's uh, good to know that at the end of this webinar, we will have an, uh, a QA and a session, so please stay with us. And the webinar will start off with uh, Luc. Luc, the floor is yours. Thank you. So in order to, to begin this, this webinar, uh, let's discuss briefly about the, the pathogen which is responsible about sunflower donny mildew, which is plasmoparal steady. And let's have a look uh, more in more details about how it's evolved, uh, how many races it has across Europe. So this is a brief summary about the presentation. We will discuss first about biology of sunflower donny mildew. Then we will uh, review its origin and current distribution uh, around the world. Uh, we will also discuss about uh, some risk and gene of sunflower because sunflower can have risk and genes uh, against this pathogen, which are called PL genes. Um, next, we will see how downy mildew can also overcome these genes, and this is called developing new races. And then we will have a look on how these races evolved in Europe for the last 20 years. And finally, we will see an example, concrete example of uh, an appeal gene in Europe and what happened to, to it in the, in the last years. And then we will conclude. So a first word, briefly about biology. So as you, so sunflower downy mildew is caused by uh, plasmoparal steady. It's the only known downy mildew to cause systemic symptoms via seedling root infection. So as you can see uh, on the scheme below, there is um, existence of all spores in the soil. This is the sexual reproduction, the conservative reproduction of this fungus. Uh, this will germinate and release those spores. Uh, those can swim into water in the soil and then can reach the roots of the young seedlings. And that will lead to a primary infection. Then it can also lead to secondary infection later on, and both type of infection can lead later on uh, to, the, to the production of new oral spores, uh, which will then stay in the ground uh, for say, six to eight years. So next slide, please. So this is yeah, the origin and current distribution of this disease across the world. Uh, it began quite a long time ago, almost a century ago. The first reports are coming from North America. And then uh, it spread to Europe around the Second World War, so in the 40s, through Yugoslavia. And then we had a second wave of infection uh, through Eastern Europe and South Africa, and also uh, South America. So today, uh, sunflower downy mildew is present over 50 countries, and it's present, it's present in four continents out of five. So 
nearly almost everywhere except for Senate. Next slide, please. So just a word about the existence of resistance genes in sunflower. So resistance genes can be found in sunflower wild species and they were used in the past uh, in inbred lines uh, to develop um, these resistant genes as donor of resistance. And then these resistant genes were in progress into commercial uh, hybrid of sunflowers uh, to fight against this disease. Uh, today, uh, there, there are 33 resistance genes that are no, known up to date worldwide. And this is, a, so in the table, you can see an example of different PL genes. So resistant genes of sunflower are called PL genes. So we have PL1, PL2, PN, PL3, until PL30. Yeah, so this is how they are, they are named. And on the right, you can see an example of what can provide such a gene in, in a sunflower hybrid. So on the left, there is no um, resistant gene, no PL gene in sunflower. And on the right, uh, yeah, there is a PL gene in, in the sunflower genetic. So th this one is providing total immunity to, to this sunflower plant. So next slide, please. So yeah, of course we have resistance genes in sunflower, but downy mildew can also overcome this um, resistance gene. And then this lead to the creation of a new race. This is how we, we define a race. So a race is a pathotype. And the race is defined based on which sunflower resistant genes this downy mildew uh, pathotype can overcome. So the emergence of new races in, is a natural phenomenon of adaptation uh, of the fungus to its host. And it's the consequence of the co-evolution between sunflower and downy mildew, simply. So in order to know which races of downy mildew we are facing, we can do a characterization in the laboratory. And so this is done through infection of different uh, sunflower hybrid line carrying different PL genes. So we call them differentials. So according uh, which uh, line, which hybrid get diseased, depending on, on the downy mildew isolate, then we can uh, know which race of downy mildew we are facing. Next slide, please. So this is how, how the races are defined uh, worldwide. This is an international nomenclature of plasmoparal steady pathotypes. So the, the first part of this table, so the, the top uh, nine lines in, in, uh, in white were created in 1998. And this, this was uh, the really first attempt to generalize the scale and to, to, add, uh, to have common results across the world. So really rapidly, um, yeah, we observed that the number of races increased. So this table were not sufficient anymore. And therefore there was a proposal in 2012 to increase uh, this differential table uh, from nine to uh, 15 different differentials in order to be able to, to, find more, to find out more races. And now this table, as you can see, so we, uh, on the top of the table, we have the races. So 100, 200, 304. This table allows to uh, identify uh, 17 races. The problem of that table is that the last commercially available PL genes are not included. So there is a clear limit in, in, in nowadays science. And this is explaining the complexity of finding, defining and testing new emerging, new emerging races. And just to have an idea today, around 50 different races are reported worldwide. So we can only screen for 17 in this table. Next slide, please. So let's uh, have a look on the races evolution uh, in Europe. So the first description, the first races of downy mildew that were described was in the 70s. So at that time, it was really easy. We had only one race in Europe, race one, and another race that were characterized in the USA, which is race two. So in the 70s, we had only two races. In the 90s, uh, more and more races were identified. Uh, the last was race 11. Uh, after this, um, all scientists worldwide uh, came to the same conclusion that the, this uh, way of naming the races were not sufficient because too many races. So they, they created um, a triplet code with three digits in, in 1995 in order to really um, name these races the same way all over the world. 
And this is the table that I, uh, I've shown you just before. So 20 years later, in 2010, uh, at least 22 races uh, are, were, now, were now identified in Europe. And uh, yeah, this is the, the three digit system was not, not enough anymore. So they proposed uh, another uh, code with five digits in 2012 to, to be able to, to, to take into consideration more and more races. In 2016, new races emerged again. So races 705, 715 in Czech Republic and races 705 also identified for the first time in Portugal and Spain. And in 2009, the race, the race uh, 714 PL8 were, was identified in Italy. And this race was able to overcome the PL8 gene, which is one of the latest genes uh, that have been made available on the market uh, to, find, to fight against Down immunity. So now let's have a look on how fast and yeah, how fast the downy mildew can evolve and overcome uh, these genes and, and these resistant genes. We will have a look on a concrete case, which is the famous PL8 gene that I just explained to you before. So the PL8 resistant genes uh, provided broad spectrum resistance, again, all races that were known at that time and has been used globally uh, in resistant cultivars around the world. So this, uh, some commercial hybrids uh, using this PL gene were launched in 2010 and 12. So a few years later, 2017, uh, we have seen already the first observation of infections on, on those hybrids in Bulgaria and Italy. One year later, uh, in 2018, the infection of an on PL8 hybrid in Italy and France. So yeah, it spread in more countries. And then um, it was also a publication that, uh, that went out, which described the, the, the new race that were overcoming PL8 gene. And this was yeah, in 2018. So this race uh, was called, called artificially 714 PL8, because this race doesn't exist in the international nomenclature, as I explained to you before. The year after, 2019, we got extraordinary extraordinary good condition for sunflower downy mildew in Europe. And this event uh, led to a general infection of the new PL8 hybrids in many countries. So in France, Italy, Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, and Turkey. So this is yeah, about, about seven years after the launch of these hybrids. So the, the races of downy mildew which were present were identified here, and the, the races that were found were 510, 704, 710, 714, and 734. Um, this is a problem because these races normally could not infect PL8 hybrid. So this is also showing that the, the actual system of uh, defining the races is not up to date anymore, and that we need to, to find new ID to to find a way to identify all these new races. So yeah, like I said, it's really not possible to differentiate these races from the non-infected PL8 ones with the present system. So the present system that I explained to you before. So just to conclude, as, you, as, you, as we have seen together, Plasma Power Steady is a really fast evolving pathogen, which is able to overcome PL8 resistant genes. Um, under favorable conditions, adaptability of the fungus can occur in very few years, as we have seen with PIA gene, concrete case. Um, however, uh, what we need to uh, highlight here is that introgressing PIA resistant genes is a long and complex process. It takes several years, and there are also many other traits to be considered, such as yield, uh, herbicide tolerance, orobrance tolerance, tolerance to other diseases, and sometimes all traits are not compatible together. So you cannot put all traits into the same uh, uh, DNA. So you have to make choice. So to conclude, to win this battle, because it's really a battle, uh, the sustainable, sustainable control of downy mildew should rely on all available methods, meaning the genetic resistance, of course, PLA genes, but also the chemical control and the agronomic practice, mainly through rotation and, yeah, of course, avoiding uh, bad condition during the sowing, meaning yeah, wet soil and, and cold soil. 
So that's, um, that's all I wanted to, to show you about the evolution of uh, the new races of Downy Mildew across Europe in the past, in the last 20 years. Um, I will now switch to my uh, colleague, Olaf Shevchuk, uh, which we will uh, present you uh, more about uh, our, our Lumizena product and, and, if, and efficacy against this uh, fungus. Thank you. So, thank you, Luke, very much for the introduction and the challenge that uh, uh, we have uh, with the Downy Mildew uh, in Sunflower and how quickly it can evolve with, in terms of resistance. Uh, definitely, uh, the, the holistic approach is important to, to manage to manage uh, the devastating disease in some of our crops. So, uh, I have a privilege today to, to introduce you uh, uh, Lumicella, which is uh, a tool to, to help growers to manage down immune resistance. So, I will talk shortly uh, about uh, Lumicella, explaining what it is, how it works. Uh, so, I mean, uh, Luke already explained about the down immunity challenge, so we know, uh, understand how important it is. Uh, and I will uh, mention about the trials uh, results that we have done with Lumicena to demonstrate how, how product works uh, and what uh, approaches we can take towards the resistance management and to summarize overall the, the presentation. Well, Lumicena. Um, this will be said at glance what we have. Well, we, 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 are, we are talking today about sunflower being a target crop. Outside of EU and other regions, um, this product can be used in also in other crops, like soybeans, for example. Uh, uh, but today we're focusing on sunflower and the, the target pest uh, or pathogen that we have in mind uh, with, with this product is the downy mildew of plasma paraclastic. The active ingredient is oxatacoprolin. Uh, we have the specific formulation for this um, uh, seed treatment use. Uh, you know from the folia uses the same molecule uh, as well. It's used in other crops, but not in sunflower. But specific formulation for seed treatment is uh, containing 200 grams of ingredient per liter uh, of oxatipoproline with a specific seed treatment formulation, which is a global uh, suspension. Uh, the product is uh, under the registration process and we have well, uh, well defined the rates for, for use uh, of this product. Uh, for EU, the, the rates are ex uh, expressed in the micrograms active ingredient per seed to be very precise uh, because of seed, seed weight is changing. So we, in this case, we deliver consistency across uh, different uh, uh, sizes of, of seeds. Um, the, the rate per hectare in this case will uh, will not change. Uh, for example, with 65,000 seeds per hectare, we will use 6.1 milliliters of products per hectare, uh, or 14.1 milliliter per unit of 150,000 seeds. Uh, so there, there is a consistency. Uh, in cases where, or in countries where this uh, rate expression is not uh, accepted, uh, we have the rate expression in liters per ton. So these many uh, non-EU countries, uh, countries like Ukraine, Russia, Serbia, where we, uh, re we have the registration already, and the product is registered uh, with liters per ton. And the rate range is from 1.25 to 1.75 liters per ton of seeds. So Lumicena uh, is part of the resist management uh, strategy, uh, how we will position it and also would need a resistance management partner from the same uh, point of view. Um, there is not so many solutions from uh, the seed treatment perspective point of view. Uh, the only one which is uh, available still as we talk is Metalaxil M. Uh, you know, the, this is formulated as, uh, formulated as uh, a product cell, 350FS for example. So um, this is the, the, the product that we have uh, used uh, to understand how um, Lumicena uh, and Metalaxilem performs in, in those uh, resistance management uh, uh, programs. Uh, well, uh, the, the key features of, of Lumicena um, are the following, and I will talk a little bit uh, later about those uh, uh, features. Uh, Lumicena provides an outstanding control of downy mildew in whatever the situation, resistant or non resistant uh, situation to, uh, to downy mildew, these known products today. Uh, Bislumicena, it delivers a completely new mode of action. So it binds to oxystrol-abiding protein 
Uh, and this mode of action classified by FRAC uh, and belongs uh, to a group 49 uh, in, in that classification. Uh, as of today, uh, there is no cross resistance to, to, to metalaxyl, which is very important uh, because there are already metalaxyl resistant cases uh, out there uh, in the nature. Uh, so we, with Lumicena, can have effective control of those uh, other veins. Uh, talking about Lumicena broadly, uh, so as I said, this is a fungicide seed treatment. Uh, with Lumicena, uh, with all the range of races that are, are there, and as, as Luke described, this uh, evolution is continuous and uh, well, hopefully never stops. But until today, uh, all known races of uh, Plotnopara for study are, are very well controlled, and we have the evidence demonstrated through numerous trials in the field and in the, in the laboratories. Uh, well, it's also good that the uh, product is systemic and, uh, and contact activity. It has a systemic and contact activity and the uh, product is able to protect against the primary and systemic infection. Um, well, no, no cross resistance to other uh, mode of action and, and fungicides. This is again a, a good news and a, a new tool that is going to be available, always available depending on the region where you are. Uh, to, to manage the, the downy mildew in the center of a crop. Uh, independently of the situation, if there is a resistance or non-resistance, as I said, Lumicena provides a high level of control in, in those situations, better than any market reference, even if there is no resistance condition in, in, into that uh, market reference. Uh, well, we are taking the holistic approach uh, uh, as Luke mentioned, we should follow that holistic approach to manage the resistance. And uh, of course, Lumicena will be combined with genetic disease of the hybrid when we talk about the complete solution uh, for downy mildew instant flower. Uh, Lumicena is very safe. It preserves a normal plant growth, uh, a prolonged establishment, and uh, pro protects the full potential of the hybrid uh, for, for yield. Uh, this is, which is uh, important uh, added value for, for the product. Uh, on the other side, uh, this is a very modern technology, very uh, modern uh, chemistry, uh, and it is effective. It's very, very, very low use rates, and therefore it, very, it, it leaves in the environment very small footprint or very uh, low footprint. For the mode of action, uh, so uh, Luke was already mentioning about the mode of action a little bit, so um, and I uh, want to go for a broader on this. Um, so Lumicena acts from the beginning. Uh, so Adnopara uh, Halshteri has a complicated life cycle and it's very aggressive pathogen. Uh, once in the plant, it's very difficult uh, for plant to survive the infection. So plant needs protection. And protection on the seed is most efficient. So we put Lumicena on the seed and when the factory comes, so the infection is get uh, controlled immediately. So we protect the seeds from the uh, primary infection uh, uh, thanks to, to the mode of action of the uh, of Lumicena. Uh, the oxatiproline active ingredient binds to oxasterol binding proteins that are responsible for many functions within the plant cell uh, with, with the pathogen cell. So with Lumicena inside. Uh, the, the pathogen uh, uh, growth is inhibited from the beginning. As I said, there is no cross resistance known today to, to, to this mode of action and to this uh, um, uh, active. Uh, at the same time, um, Lumicena is very specialized only to, to ohomicides control. As I said uh, before, other crops are also, um, well, active ingredient is used in other crops like uh, wines or potatoes. Um, to control Phytophthora and Plasmopara. Uh, so this group of pathogens is controlled uh, very well, or the Plasmopara Halstedi is one of them. On, uh, on the results, how product works, uh, so um, um, I mentioned already that it acts from the very beginning. Uh, Lumicena inhibits the germination of zoospore. In this example, there are two petri dishes. So on the left here, we have the untreated petri dish. There is no uh, oxatiproprene solution inside. So we put in both 
petri dishes, exactly the same concentration of, of those spores. So on, on this part here, we have the, uh, uh, those spores living normally, germinating uh, and multiplicating very, uh, uh, let's say, very healthy pathogen here. Nothing prevents them from multiplying and growing normally. Contrary on the right, uh, on, on the right side, we have the solution of oxotapoproline uh, placed uh, in the petri dish, and there is no growth of those spores, there is no germination of those spores, and there are some of those spores that are remaining, but their viability is, uh, is very low, so we don't see the germination. So excellent uh, activity, even at a very low concentration, as low as 0 0.1 ppm. So with that, we have excellent uh, combination uh, of, of the mode of action, the activity, uh, and this uh, active ingredient and lumicena with it provides an excellent tool to integrate the disease management uh, for sunflower. Uh, on both sides, the, the, the chemical seed protection and the hybrid, we have the extension of life of, of both components of, of the technology of sunflower production. Just a reminder of the, of the, of the threat, uh, what it looks like out there in the field, the downy milk, of, well, I'm pretty sure everyone knows it, uh, those who face it, uh, uh, they, they know it very well. Um, well, those plants affected uh, with systemic infection of, uh, of downy mildew has no chance to survive. Uh, secondary infection also, uh, uh, though is very, very small um, in terms of the uh, impact on the yield, but it also carries over to, to the next uh, uh, cycle uh, coming together with, with the seeds. So uh, uh, downy mildew is, uh, is a big threat, significant loss of yield, as much as 100% of the crop can be lost if there is no protection at all. Um, so it needs to be tackled. Uh, as I mentioned, the Lumicena is very much specialized in oomycetes. There is no other pathogens outside of that um, class is control. So um, sometimes we get uh, a, a mixed, uh, um, we, we, we mix uh, sometimes the, the downy mildew with, uh, with other diseases. So in this case, Albugo, we had the feedback from, the, from our trial program in the past that uh, in some trials, um, the, the albugo is mixed with, uh, with downy mildew, so we assume that this potential can happen also in the practice. Um, we want to underline that Lumicena will not control albugo, although generally albugo is not a, a life-threatening disease for sunflower and will not do, in most of the cases, any uh, harm to, to, to the yield of sunflower crop. However, there is no um, control methods available today for to control this disease. On the trials uh, results and yield uh, performance of, uh, of the crop with uh, Lumicena. So this chart here demonstrates the performance of Lumicena again uh, on the different um, levels of uh, infection. So left part here, we have the primary infection and the level of performance of Lumicena against the market reference on the primary infection. So the level of infection we see here is very high. In, in this condition, Lumicena delivers uh, roughly 90 plus percent control. It's not 100, but uh, best than anything else today. So this is the best reference we had, uh, methanoxam. We outperform it clearly. If you, do, if you, if you speak about total uh, systemic infection, uh, still, Lumicena delivers the uh, best uh, control possible uh, as a seed treatment. Here is their visual proof of that. Uh, we have the farmer standard practice here on the right of that picture. We see a lot of uh, plants that didn't survive the attack of downy mildew. Uh, so there is a, a great, great loss and financial impact. Whereas in the case of Lumicena here on the closer part of the picture, we have uh, almost every plant surviving, uh, healthy, looking good, uh, delivering on, uh, on, on the promise of the full potential yield. Uh, another example here is uh, from, from France, again, uh, southwestern France, uh, fields visited uh, a couple of years ago, uh, well, early season, we see the plants do not survive 
the, the early season attack of down in Milvio. Uh, this is a result uh, of the, you know, the uh, systemic infection. One dies very fast, there is no protection. Uh, on, on the left, on, on the right here, sorry, uh, we have the, the comparison of the standard mark, you know, standard practice used by, uh, by farmer um, today. So um, this is the plants that are um, affected by, by, the, uh, by systemic down immune infection, where the, the, the plants treated with lumicella next to it, they still stay uh, healthy and, uh, well, and nice. There is no, no infection here. Uh, proof of uh, no cross resistance to, to methanoxam. Um, so this is a lab study that we did uh, um, in, uh, in Spain, in Sevilla laboratories, where we have treated the sensitive uh, hybrid with the methanoxam uh, resistant uh, isolates of down in mildew. And as you can see on the left part, um, the methanoxam application did not result in any control. So you see the, the, the seedlings uh, infected with the down mildew, whereas on this part we have uh, lumicena on the seeds. And in this case, all plants uh, are looking nice, healthy, and delivering on, on, the, on the young uh, uh, growth uh, promise. So, so they uh, pousse bien, as they say in France. Uh, the demonstration of the um, health benefits of, uh, of lumicena when, they put, when it's put on the seeds. So here we have the, the different level of uh, number of healthy plants on the, on the, on the, the scale here. This is the scale goes um, up and up. Uh, the untreated plants are taken 100% of healthy plants. And uh, in those different levels of um, uh, infection, different trials have different level of infection. But what we see here on the right part Whenever we have the, uh, the, the more infection, there is a bigger benefit, uh, there is a more healthy plant uh, versus to, to, to current market standard practice. Okay. So uh, Lumicena is a safe uh, product uh, and protects uh, seeds and plants very well. On the yield part, again, we have um, trials, yield trials done in different um, conditions. Uh, there is more benefit, or you see here the, the trials uh, that were uh, harvested and where the level of uh, disease in the treated plots was very high. We see the, the benefit of using the Misena as a seed treatment is greater. So up to 20% of, of, of yield benefit versus the current market practice today. Now, a few words about resistance management. Well, this topic is um, very, high to, very high on the agenda of uh, a, a, any company that uh, provides seeds or seed treatment solutions uh, to, to the farmers. Uh, well, Lumicena has, has been as a, uh, the one of the tools that's still available uh, to, to the growers. Uh, we, are, we want to protect the technology and we would recommend also the resistance management department to go together with Lumicena in addition to, to hybrid protection uh, or hybrid resistance. Uh, the uh, long existing methanoxam resistance management partner that we have tested in the past proved to be uh, compatible with Lumicena. Uh, the, uh, well, uh, we, we, we have a, a very strong evidence that uh, two products work together, um, but unfortunately, we don't know how long this uh, recommendation can, can be due to a known decision about the mechanism in the European Union. Out, outside of EU, this uh, still is uh, fine. Uh, we have this recommendation uh, for outside of EU countries where mechanism could be available for the growers. Uh, we uh, uh, do screen other uh, partners for potential uh, resistance management opportunity with Lumicena. But these efforts are still ongoing. In terms of the uh, resistance management partner, as well as the uh, partner to enhance the, the spectrum of activity, because uh, Lumicena has a specialized activity only for, for downy mildew or, or in sunflower. So we do recommend to mix Lumicena with other uh, 
product that has a proven down immune to efficacy, as well as we recommend to mix other fungicides to treatment to enhance the activity of the seed treatment solutions against the secondary pathogens, in this case, uh, for example, like uh, PTO. So we do support tank mixes uh, recommendation here, and uh, this is our strategy, mix Lumicena with effective down immunity control or effective uh, secondary diseases uh, product uh, that controls the secondary diseases, right? And with that, um, well, uh, I've done uh, the, the technical part. Uh, I would be happy to answer the questions after the session. Um, and I give the floor now to Nilsely Fernandez, who will speak about the applicability and seed safety of Lumicena. Nilsely, the floor is yours now. Thank you, Oleg. Thank you so much. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, Another important step that we have here in Corteva is to study the behavior of our seed apply product in the point of view for application. And the main objective of this study is to deliver for our customer the right recipe to apply for the seeds. And, to, for, and for we give this kind of recommendation, in Corteva we use the Center for Seed Apply Technology that is distributed around the world to do this type of tests. We started the first step uh, uh, doing the, the combination of different products because Lumicena, as uh, Oleg explained, is not a, uh, we will not apply it with only uh, alone, but it's sometimes it's, we can put some fungicide, another fungicide or insecticides, and we need to add some fertilizer, biological or coating. That is, is important for us to check the chemical compatibility of this product in the advance. After this step, we need to do some kind of assessment to check the coverage of this, this application because in the end of the day, the farmer is the, is the first uh, factor, the quality for the farmer to open the bag and see the seeds, the quality of the, the application. If the, the farmer saw, see that the seeds are not really covered, they can understand the, that the application is not good. So for us, it's important to make sure that the amount of coating or the amount of water that we are applying is really good and cover all the seeds. Other important test that you provide in CSAT is the product adhesion. This is really important because when we treat the seeds in, the, in our seed production site, for instance, when after the treatment, you look, the seeds looks really well, but after some abrasion of some movement of the bags, the seeds can, uh, the, the, the product can be lost during this process. And this is not good. The, again, the, the, the farmer open the bag and see that there is a lot of dust or a lot of problems on the bags. Then for us, it's important to make sure that it does not happen in the end. Then we need to do some tests to check the coverage and also the product decision. Other tests that we provide here is the plantability and also the flowability. These two steps is really important for the farmers and also for the seed production to make sure that the combination of the, these different products together cannot influence the plantability or the flowability. In the end, uh, Lumicena uh, was tested with several re combination recipes and we have here. And then we can check that this, this uh, compound not interfere in the compatibility or coverage or, or plantability flowability. It's really chemical com compatible. And for the operator point of view, it's uh, is, is good to have a recipe, right recipe with the right amount of the code, the amount of, uh, correct amount of the, the water to not affect the productivity in the end of the day. Then for the, the application point of view, uh, Lumicena is really, is really good and really safe. Next slide, please. One more. Okay. Yes, uh, this is an example that one important test that also in our CSAT we provide is, uh, is to check uh, if the recipe that we are working can provoke or can pr produce some kind of dust. And this test is, is really important, many in all the Europe, but they use in a, lo a lot of other countries in US and also in uh, Latin America. Then we can check the, the amount of dust produced by this recipe. 
We use normally an equipment, the name is Hellback. And this equipment, we can do some tests and can check. You can see the filters from Hellback when you use the product without coating or with coating. Is it really important to have the, the right polymer, the right coating to apply with Lumicena? Because we can avoid the loss of the active ingredient and also we can protect the environment. Normally, the, the, all the recipes that we, we are working with Lumicena is into the ESTI standard, then you, you can for sure have a good quality of the application with this uh, combination of the recipe. Next, please. Okay, here uh, an example, the other important test that we provide for, all, for, for, for our, our product is the seed safety test in long term. What it means we need to check the, if the Lumicena uh, in, together with the other compounds can interfere in the quality, the, 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 the germination and the vigor of the seeds. Then we treat the seeds and we stock the seeds for a long time. As you can see in the graphic, this was stocked for 24 months. And for Lumicena, you, see, you don't see any impact of the seeds. This is a really important step because we can put seeds with seed treatment together you need to measure if this product can interfere uh, negatively for the germination in, in, in this situation. So for Lumicena, we, as I, I told you, I have uh, several uh, tests with different combinations of the, the, the recipes with Lumicena, and we cannot see any problem. That is really good for the, the farmer and also for the seed company because they cannot discard of the seeds because we have, they have problem with the physiological uh, quality. Okay, now uh, this is my, my part. I will move to Dominic, please go. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you nicely. So I, I propose now we exchange um, about the regulatory part of Lumicena and also uh, about farmer satisfaction. Uh, my, my idea is to, to mix these two topics as some action done um, in some country at regulatory level uh, last year have generated a huge sample of new users. And I think uh, we, we can take advantage of that for our conclusion. So, so but first of all, uh, in, in this slide, uh, let, me, let me present here the general picture of the actual regulatory situation. At this moment, uh, only Ukraine and Serbia have the product uh, Lumicena registered. In few months, uh, it would be the case uh, in Russia, uh, then in, in Turkey, end of December, uh, for this uh, last one, Turkey, this means that it will be tense to arrive at time for the next planting season, but we are working with supply to be to be fully prepared. About EU 27 now, it's a little bit more complex. Uh, Spain, uh, the, Spain is the country in charge of EU 27 registration. Uh, the estimated date uh, are October 2021. Uh, and in consequences, through mutual recognition, um, one year more for all other countries asking for that. Uh, so 2022 for the, all other countries. This means that uh, with this um, normal calendar, the natural calendar, Europe will not be able to offer to the farmers uh, the possibility to use Lumicena next, uh, next, ne next planting season, uh, next year, uh, in, some, in some months. I mean, uh, but if you will remember, nevertheless, last year, some country in Europe uh, allowed the use. So uh, why? Uh, I suggest to move to the following slide to, 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 to better understand the, the, the reason. So next slide, please. Uh, here, uh, we, you, we have the, the downy milieu situation in Europe. Uh, you can see that it is getting uh, worrying. Uh, I mean that field infestation last uh, two years was uh, getting critical in some area. I try here to, to summarize by color the, the level of attack that key country faced uh, last year. Um, as you can see in, in 2019, uh, Central Europe principally faced a huge attack of uh, downy milieu uh, here in red and, uh, and orange. So um, even if it's clear if we will all know that genetic sensitivity, uh, new race evolution, 
rotation uh, influences the development of downy milieu, it's, it's clear that the level of pressure uh, is depending to the climatic condition, and in particular, the quantity of rain during the, the first stage after germination. Uh, so I wanted to remember you this fact uh, to better understand why uh, last year, group uh, of farmers of this country uh, in uh, West um, and, and South Europe began requesting to their authority an emergency use uh, of Lumicena uh, because they suffer uh, a lot in, uh, in 2019. So next, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so it, it has been the, the case uh, last year in, in five countries. A farmer association in this uh, country request uh, in 2019 the emergency use permit of Lumicena and reach reach it. Uh, the first uh, the first one was um, uh, Italy, uh, then um, Bulgaria, Greece, uh, and, and and Hungary. Um, France also uh, uh, France also only for for seed uh, for seed production. So you, you easily understand um, you easily understand that uh, this allow farmers of this country to to use uh, Lumicena, uh, principally in country where you can, can next slide please. Uh, ah, so there is a problem here because there is not the, the good one, but I can I can continue. Um, uh, you, you, you can easily understand that uh, this um, emergency use in, 19, uh, in 2019 uh, allows uh, farmers to, to use seeds. And we have 400,000 hectares uh, acre age covered by Oxatia Tripipurin uh, la, la, last campaign. It's a huge, very huge uh, sample, 400,000 hectares. So uh, on this base, uh, we can conclude now uh, on a high level of customer satisfaction. Why? Because uh, we do not heard uh, any, any problem of selectivity. Uh, we didn't receive any claims already in this point. And about efficacy level, uh, we confirm a good control of downy milieu even, uh, even under high pressure. In 99.9% uh, .9 of the case, we didn't receive any claim. Uh, to be honest, we received on 150 hectares uh, some uh, irregular data, and we are able now to, to, to explain why. Uh, in one of them, it was due to a bad application of product, so th this uh, reinforced the presentation of my colleague nicely, insisting on the, the quality control uh, in, in factory. And uh, in the other case, it was caused by a um, uh, farmer having uh, applied themselves uh, some, some other products. So something, of course, uh, not recommended and, and forbidden. So to conclude, 400,000 hectares treated last year, farmers perfectly uh, satisfied uh, by the selectivity and the good control of uh, the only milieu. And by the way, uh, okay to, to, to repeat this experience. So next slide, uh, where I, I try to, to summarize uh, the key data about the calendar of registration. I just put and add in green uh, what is uh, what uh, some countries are doing this year. You easily understand that uh, uh, the same countries and last year are also asking for uh, emergency use uh, this year. So it's the case of Bulgaria, Greece, um, Romania, uh, Hungary. Uh, and also France and, uh, and Spain. In Spain, I can just add that uh, Bulgaria have uh, yet obtained uh, it uh, for for next uh, next season. So um, now we just have to to, to wait the, the answer in the, the coming weeks. So that's um, that's all for me. Uh, thanks for for your attention. Excellent. Thank you all so much for, uh, for sharing your expertise with us. Um, it was really interesting. And I also think that um, seeing that we have this pathogen that is so fast involving and overcoming the, the genetic resistance, that we're going to need uh, all the tools that we have available to, uh, to make sure that we have a sunflower crop to harvest at the end of the season. So I'm not surprised that all sunflower growers are uh, are fully satisfied without without exception, and that's that's really great to see. 
I'd now like to go into a, uh, a Q&A session and um, Corteva has been uh, collecting uh, the most frequently asked questions and I'd like to, to check with you, uh, speakers of today, if you can uh, shine your light on, uh, on these questions. Um, first question, we, we know that uh, Lumicena is, is controlling downy mildew in sunflower. What is the level of control on other diseases? So, uh, uh, Oleg is here, so I can answer this uh, question. So, uh, in relation to other diseases in sunflower, as I mentioned, the Lumicena is, uh, is a specialist in, in downy mildew. It wouldn't control other pathogens that are harmful to the crop. And for this reason, we do recommend mixtures, effective products to control, for example, P2 or other, other diseases. So, uh, for other crops, Yes, we, we, we do have uh, other um, pathogens on, on, the, on the labels, like Pazopara viticola or Phytophthora infestans in potatoes. Uh, yeah, but sunflower, we focus on, on downy mildew. So once customers start using the product, can they, can they use it alone or do they need a mixing partner? Well, yeah, we certainly recommend a mixing partner. Mm -hmm. uh, resistance management, so a product that delivers effective control of downy mildew, we certainly recommend such product. This is a, the primary and most important disease that we need control in sunflower. We certainly recommend the mixture. Whatever the product uh, uh, is available, uh, until now it was uh, methanoxam, uh, but tomorrow uh, if any other product would be available, we certainly recommend uh, after certain and careful testing on the compatibility of the product to use together with Lumicena. On the other side, any other product that can be used to extend the, 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 the efficacy of the of Lumicena against other pathogens, of course, it can be, can be used. Mm -hmm. uh, I think here we have a, an eager uh, customer uh, asking where will it be available in the market? I can, I can answer on this, this question. Yes, if we are looking today on the on the European on the European fungicide market and on, on sunflower, fungicide seed treatment is the standard in, in Europe. This treatment it happens at the industrial level. Lumicena will be used by seed companies and the industrial seed processors in a professional way to assure at the end the top quality treatment. Mm -hmm. I think there are some more eager customers out there. Here is one asking if uh, there is the possibility to have early access to this technology in the market of EU27. Yes, I, I, I think I tried to, to, to answer to that uh, in during my presentation. Yes, mm -hmm. the, the only way for next season is the emergency use. Uh, and uh, you, you, I just uh, present that uh, uh, five uh, five countries are asking for. Uh, so we need to wait at this moment for next season. Uh, only Bulgaria uh, say uh, gives their uh, okay, but we are waiting in the coming month uh, the answer of the the other one. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thanks, Dominic. Uh, the the product is already registered in a few uh, EU countries. Can customers conduct the treatment? in those countries where registration is complete? I can answer this, uh, this question. So for the moment, there is no registration in EU 27. So we have to wait the first uh, either registration or NHSC use. So in this case, of course, uh, once we will have the, the NHSC use in the countries developed by, uh, by Dominic, uh, of course, uh, we will have the opportunity to treat in those countries, but only for the use of the product in this country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, may, may I add one point here? Sure. Because today, Lumicena is registered in uh, Ukraine and in Serbia, 
We have the possibility to conduct this treatment also in some countries who are allowed in the export of treated, seed, of treated seeds for that, for that countries. Mm -hmm. We have this, this possibility also available today in EU27. Okay, thanks for that addition, Daniel. You know, Nelsely, I think this, the next question is for you. Is there a special procedure for this treatment? Yes, Marcel. As uh, I explained, and also as the guys uh, explained, also it's really important we do a right way the application. As you see, the rate is not so big, and during the application, if you do something wrong during the the mix time or or the application the the, the normal way, it's really complicated. We have the am correct amount of the product seed by seed, and you need to protect seed by seed then it's important to make sure that we are using the correct way and also the correct coating or polymer, correct amount of water. Then for this special case, I, I, I would say that he, please, if somebody needs some explanation, some support for us, please contact us from SAR team and CSAR team to make sure that the application is doing, doing rightly the right way. Mm -hmm. And does anybody know the registered rate per ton of seed? What what would that be? Yeah, I, I mentioned it in my mm. slide for, for the product. Uh, so outside of you, where product is registered uh, and rate expression is either per ton, uh, we have the point uh, recommendation for that, which is 1.25 to 1.75 liters per ton of seeds for some flour. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's what we yes. Mm. Uh, here is a customer that wants to know if they can already use this technology in 2022 in the EU27. Um, in 2022, uh, the, the answer is uh, yes, because uh, we expect the registration in Spain uh, in October 2021. So uh, all the seeds uh, coming from Spain can be sold in Spain and in all other country of Europe. So the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know. Uh, what, what is the impact on germination of the treatment on the seeds? Yes, uh, as you explained in my, my slide, you see we have a study for a long, long time where I show up to 24 months, but we have more than this. And Lumicina is really safe for germination and for vigor. And in this study, as I explained, it's important to test different genetics, but Again, we test different types of genetics and we don't see any problem with the germination and vigor during the storage time. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it is, uh, I can uh, add to, to that uh, point also in the field conditions, the sure. uh, percent of the emerged plants, even if there is no infection, Lumicena has no negative impact. Contrary, uh, we have a, a benefit of having Lumicena on the seed and it stimulates they, they pro promote the, the growth of the plants. Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you all. Uh, that's all the time that we have for today. I'd like to thank all the speakers for, for joining us and, and to our audience. Of course, I hope you found this uh, information valuable. Uh, probably good to mention also that a recording of this webinar will be uh, made available on Corteva's YouTube channel and it will also be available on sat.corteva.com. Thanks again, stay safe, and I really hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you.